Ah? Yeah. Do you know where Ah went? Do you know where Ah went? Here, if you move back, you'll see yourself. Moving back. There he is. No? No. That's mommy's camera. You give it back to mama. Just getting ready for the day and realize that I have not really updated YouTube on our house situation because we bought a house and we are going to be leaving New York City and moving to the suburbs in the summer of 2023. I kind of like glazed over this on my Instagram. I mentioned it in passing that we were looking at houses and then I mentioned on a story that we got a house but like I don't even know if it was set in stone at the time so it was kind of very under the radar and then i've mentioned it in a few instagram posts recently and a lot of people are like wait did i miss something did you buy a house are you leaving the city and so the answer is yes we bought a house and we're leaving the city and i wanted to use this little moment as i'm getting ready for the day to just update you guys on what's been going on timeline wise michael and i have kind of always said that when we have kids we want to move to the suburbs like we're both from the suburbs of new york and we have just always said like it's nice to have a backyard it's really nice to be part of a community we loved growing up in a neighborhood going to public schools so that's kind of what we knew we wanted for our future kids and when Milo was born we had this lease on our apartment for two years we knew that it was going to be ending in the summer of 2023 and we kind of always said you know at that point I guess would be a good time for us to move and we're getting pretty excited about leaving the city and I personally love the city so much really couldn't imagine leaving for a while but but in recent days the idea has really really excited me and i'm ready like i am excited to be in the suburbs and to be having our own space having quiet having access to nature having a car and a driveway and a backyard like i'm just very excited for all of this around last summer is when we started the search because we didn't know like where we wanted to end up throughout the search you know inventory is pretty low with a lot of the housing market right now. So throughout the search, we were not finding much. And in probably the fall of 2022, we found a house that we really liked and we were on the verge of putting in an offer, really on the verge. We took a moment and thought about it and we realized that we have our lease here at this apartment we're renting until the summer, July. So if we had actually purchased a house in November of last year, we would have had like over seven months of paying for the mortgage on a house House while we're also still paying for rent on this apartment that we're renting. And that overlap of rent and mortgage was kind of absurd. <laughs> I understand that we wanted to start looking at houses because the inventory was so low. And it's also just good as you're going through the housing process to see a bunch of houses and like walk through them and, and see how they feel and compare them to each other. So it was fine that we started the search early, but it was just too early to actually close on a house. So we said, you know, it's too early. We told our realtor that we actually were gonna put our search on pause. And we decided that what would be ideal for us would be if we could close on a house in the spring of 2023. Because if we could find a house in the spring and close on it, then we would have a few months until it turned July when our lease ends. And in those few months, we could have time to do any work we need to do on the house if necessary. Or, you know, we would just have a little bit of time to kind of slowly move in and get ourselves situated in this new life position. I personally didn't want to close on a house and move in the same month that our lease was ending and just kind of like one month, everything's tumultuous and stressful and a rush. I felt like the spring was preferable. So we told our realtor, we're actually not gonna start looking again until the spring because we don't wanna close until the spring. And she was like, okay, great, we'll pick it back up in the spring. In December, she gives me a call and she says, I know you're not looking until the spring, but there's a house that the family doesn't wanna list it, so it's off market. I only know about it because the their agent is my friend and the owners don't wanna close until the spring. So it's kind of a perfect situation for you. Michael and I, 
did a FaceTime video walkthrough of the house because we were in the city that day and, and couldn't get out. And we loved the house from FaceTime. We wound up going in person and walking through it and we just loved it. This is our house and it was the perfect combination of being renovated enough that the, the family has taken such good care of it. It's in good enough condition that we could just move in and live there and be happy with the way it looks. But because we have the time, it's totally conducive to us making a few small, what I'm gonna call cosmetic tweaks to the house. So that's where we're at. Closing in the spring, we're moving in the summer, we're doing a little bit of renovation work in between. The renovation stuff is a story for another day because I've kind of gotten a little ahead of myself. I don't know if I'm going to say ahead of myself, but I've got really excited about the renovations and we start what started out as like a couple of small cosmetic Tweaks has turned into changing the structure of the house. And I'm really excited about it because we plan on being in this house long term. Like we're really, really excited about the neighborhood. We're really excited about the area and the street. And we're really excited about the house and the property. So we plan on being here for our lives. Like that's my thought at least. And so I'm really ready, willing, and able to put some work into the house to make it our dream home because it's not like a house I plan on being in for a year and then flipping it. And that, my friends, is the story of the house. That's where we're at with everything right now. This down. I'm putting on my new Amazon workout set because I have a workout that's happening in the middle of the day today. So I figure I'll just get dressed in my workout clothes and then not have to worry about changing. I cannot wait to show you this Amazon set. It is $29 and is probably the most comfortable, cute workout set I own. <laughs> Pulling my pants up. One thing that is like scary for me, I'm pulling my pants up, hold on. One thing that is a little scary for me about this whole moving situation is that I'm like a New York City girl. The city has become a part of my identity. Not only like in my, hold on, let me first show you the set. I'm gonna put you right here. Okay, here's my workout set. Buttery soft, really form fitting. It's one of those workout sets that like sticks to your skin. You know how sometimes like when you lean forward, the pants like move away. It doesn't do that. It's just really a perfect set. Highly recommend. I'm putting it in my Amazon storefront. I have it in two, three colors, three colors. I have it in like this brown color also. And then I have it in black, but it's in the wash. Really, I could live in this. I'm gonna wear it all day as loungewear and then it will transition into my workout outfit. I will link it for you in my Amazon storefront if you're looking for a new workout set. It's in the section called clothes. What I was saying about New York City, over the past few years, New York City has become like a part of my identity. Someone once described it to me as like, New York is like a character in my videos. Totally agree with that and see that, but in my personal life too, it's just become a part of me. I've lived in four separate neighborhoods of the city. I feel so, so comfortable here. I feel at home. I don't know, I just love the city. And the decision to move out, although it was like a long time coming, it was kind of difficult to make the ultimate decision of like, okay, we have a day now when we know we're, we're leaving. because. There's a little sadness to it, but life keeps moving. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood that felt very neighborhoody and homey. And then I left and I went to college and then I came to New York City and I lived here in my 20s. And now it's like I'm in my 30s and it feels right to be kind of taking my family back to the type of upbringing that I had. I'm just so excited to be a suburban girl. So one thing that's exciting about the suburbs is that I will hopefully be able to go in the car and drive places and I can become a car vlogger. <laughs> That's like actually one of the reasons I'm excited to go to the suburbs is I could talk to people in the car. Cause the car is like a great place to spill out your feelings and thoughts. And I don't ever drive here. I've got a day and a weekend full of stuff. Starting today with a Zoom chat with my friend Emily DiDonato, who I made a YouTube video with a couple years ago where I was trying a New York City model's morning routine. She's one of my mama friends who also left the city recently, moved to the suburbs. So we're gonna catch up on all things motherhood, work, and suburban life. And you know, she's kind of like took the plunge a little before I did. So I'm sure I can learn a lot from her and her experience of living in the suburbs. She's a great follow, by the way, for anyone who's looking for like authentic motherhood content. She's actually pregnant with her second right now. Gonna go get this day started. I have a lot of stuff to do and I'll talk to you soon.
Here we come, Mama. Reach. Milo, can you walk? Walk to Lulu. Take a couple steps. Milo. Dada. I'll come walk with you. Back to walk Dada. to Lulu. You're doing it. To Lulu, it. look. She's holding her hand. There's Milo in the air, in the... Where? <laughs> There's Milo in the air. <laughs>light yesterday because we actually have a wedding in Cancun in Mexico that we're leaving for at the end of this week so I didn't want to completely overstock the fridge and then have stuff go to waste so I just did a slight meal prep I want to show you what I made rice and chicken this is always great to just create like bowls on the go and because I wanted kind of like a Mexican bowl situation we've got rice the grilled chicken and then this corn and bean salad which was like honestly not even meal prep it's just beans and corn straight from a can, drained, rinsed, and then put in the Tupperware. Always good to have roasted broccoli, and this is my favorite type of roasted broccoli. Olive oil, a little bit of sea salt, fresh lemon juice, and garlic, so good. And if you're fancy and you put lemon zest on top, it's even better, but I know that's a lot to ask. Then I wanted to assemble, okay, I'm gonna put this stuff back and keep going, but next I wanted to have kind of like a Greek bowl that I could assemble for lunch on a couple of days. So for my Greek bowl, we've also got rice. I have a cucumber tomato salad this cool as a cucumber dip i initially wanted the tzatziki but they didn't have it so i'm trying this i feel like it will taste the same and some more cherry tomatoes and also red onion also for the greek day i'm definitely gonna have the chicken there's more chicken in the freezer by the way and then also in the freezer kind of as like a heat up whenever I'm ready to eat it type of thing. I have meatballs for Milo and frozen shrimp. Also, I steam some green beans. These are ready to grab and go. A couple of other things I got at the grocery store this week that were, oh, spinach obviously really useful because in the mornings when I've been making Milo eggs, I've been taking the kitchen shears and cutting spinach up into it to make them kind of like green eggs. I also got these oat milk chocolate puddings which i'm very excited to try because i'm a chocolate girly oh and then the best thing i made was this new dish i don't even want to open it because now there's like a little condensation in it i'll just show you the picture of what it looked like after i made it but it is a sesame chickpea recipe and it was pretty easy to make just like a lot of sauces mixed together on the stove a little bit of arrowroot powder to make it thick and then chickpeas sesame seeds and i'm very excited about this okay sorry that i'm so close to the dish rack but this is actually the only place my phone fits i feel like when it comes to my meal prep that's definitely something that i get a ton of questions about and a lot of interest in and i will say if i'm going to toot my own horn for a second i'm so so proud of how i've been able to stick to this meal prep routine and do it on sundays and it yields food for my family for the entire week and it saves me so much time it saves me so much money from ordering in it just feels so much better for me knowing that i'm feeding my family i know what ingredients are going into our food and it's also a lot of fun and it's kind of just part of my habitual routine these days so every time i share my meal prep photos on sundays i get a lot of questions about what recipes i'm following or how i did that and so this is now the second time i'm going to be hosting a live meal prep workshop on zoom with my meal prep coach if this video is playing on your computer before february 26th 
a Sunday. I guess I should say the year because YouTube videos have a very long shelf life. If it's before February 26th, 2023, and you would like to join, it costs you $25 to join. And essentially once you sign up, you will be emailed a PDF document that has all the recipes we're gonna be following, all the ingredients that you'll need to come prepared to the call with. And then live on Sunday the 26th at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, we're all gonna meet on Zoom in a big group and we're all gonna do the meal prep together led by Elia, who's my meal prep coach, who is along the way gonna be sharing with you guys expert tips and tricks and strategies for meal prepping so that hopefully by the end of the call, you will not only have a week's worth of meals stocked up in your fridge, ready to go for the week, but you will also have tons of tips and information. And I believe you're gonna feel really inspired and really equipped to continue doing meal prep after the call. One other thing I bought at the grocery store is this pumpkin pie mix. And I had wanted to make like pumpkin waffles or pumpkin pancakes or something for Milo for the week. But because we're going away, I just don't know if I wanna make so much stuff. Okay, last thing. I don't know if this is going to come in time, but we have this wedding that I told you in Cancun and it's Michael's friend's wedding from college. And he is a really funny guy. It's like a wedding situation I've never experienced before, but it is a 6.30, a.m. sunrise wedding with 31 people, I believe, on the beach. And the attire for the event is white lotus attire. Not really sure what that means, but there was like a welcome page for the event that had, as you scroll down and you see the itinerary for the weekend, it was playing the white lotus theme song. And then at the bottom, it was just like photos of all the characters from white lotus being like, this is your outfit inspiration. We got the like itinerary with the theme page two weeks ago and the wedding is now coming up this weekend. So it's all very quick and fast. And I did not really have something in my wardrobe that I felt like was fitting for this. So I kind of did like a last minute splurge on Amazon and I found a gown on Amazon, which I've never worn a dress like a wedding dress style dress from Amazon before, but I ordered one and it's a little funky and I'm gonna wait for it to come in and if it comes in and gets delivered before I need to edit this vlog, then I will pop a little video of me trying the dress on in this video. If not, don't worry, you'll come to Cancun with me and I will show you the dress then. I have the morning off from Milo. He slept at his grandparents and they're with him this morning, but I have to go do a tiny bit of work. Then I gotta pick him up. See you later. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go! Swim time! In your swimsuit? Come on. Let's find a pretty, oh, who's that? Dada. That's not Dada, that's a dog. Mm -hmm. Woof, woof. You see flowers? Yeah, we smell the flower. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Smile. <laughs> tickle, tickle. Let's twist again like we did last year. 